Well, Tom, if you uh, recall, I think you were talking about by mid second year, the, well, you know, I called it the um, the professional foundation year, see, where, you know, for example, in uh, in industrial design, some of the foundation problems would be doing actually designs of uh, of objects, see in the very basic forms, the basic forms. Uh, sometimes, you know, they talk about the function of form, you see, and uh, the shaping of forms. And one, at least I can tell you uh, more clearly, the curriculum changed a little bit, you see, uh, uh, lately. And uh, it was, um, at one point, we we made the distinction between designing the product that uh, people buy, you know, like telephones and uh, you know bookcases and uh, uh, utensils of all different kinds. You know, there are myriads of them, you know, on the market. <clears throat> then the other, we had a parallel class that was also fundamental. However, it was based on the aesthetic side of uh, of the object. See? It's almost almost looking at the objects as a piece of sculpture. See? And it's really a, uh, also, by the way, a way of looking at things for the artist. You know, I recall one time we had my wife and I had purchased silverware for the house here. And we couldn't really find satisfactory designs, you know. They were, most of them were absolutely horrible. They all got the curlicues, you know, all those dumb things. And just like to, to switch right away, you know, for, I don't know, nobody's wearing a tie, which is a good thing. Like men sometimes will wear, you know, a shirt with, with kind of scrolls uh, designs, I suppose, more a la Hawaiian. And then they'll put a tie on with serpents. And I don't mind telling you, Tom, that scares the hell out of me. You know, you can't, you know, you can't put something on it. You look, to me, it looks idiotic. You know, you want to put something active, you put it all, something against plain. You won't put something bright, you know, in acting. Put it all, something against grays, something simple. You know, the, the Chinese are terrific with the, the use of line, you know. They don't put a line, a fine line, over a fine line, and over a fine line. By the time you get to the third line, you have what? You have confusion. It's not design, no longer linear, it's a mess. You want to put in a fine line, beautiful. Put it against a gray, heavier line. Or put the two against a black line. See, or a different gray line, so that things are pulled apart. This is the kind of thing, you know, the kind of mental uh, adjustment after the foundation year. See, this is what students have to do on a second year level. Same way with color, you know, they've, they've exercised the use of color in simple tests. You know, like lightness against darkness, brightness against grayness, you know, all this, so that they can comprehend the properties of color. See, that's the foundation. On a second year level, you know, they begin to use it more intricately, see. They yes, use it. You, you used to say, they use uh, like a triad, use a triad, you know, against different tonalities, you see. Or use a light pattern against a dark pattern. There's all kinds of combinations of problems that, that, that are given. And be more creative about it, see. Be more creative, you know. The problems are given so that they can take off a little more, see. And the foundation, we, hold, we actually hold them back. You start taking off, 
in the foundation year, and it sounds good. Somebody teaches, somebody school says, oh, you know, these kids are creative. The hell they are. They're not creative, they're stupid. That's what they are. They just don't get, they get the clarity of anything. That's the trouble. These, all these wonderful kids, they go to school, you know, to get wrapped up in, in stupidity, not the, pra the practice of, of the quality images. Like I said about the Chinese, you know, oh, they're masters of line, but they don't confuse the images. Make them clear so that you can feel them, you can see them, see. And that's pretty much what they do. An illustration in second year, I think I mentioned that, it's like the rain scene, you know. It's not just, you don't do a, a watercolor and then just put streaks on and they say, I'm doing rain. That's <sighs> taking a broom and sweeping it off, you know. That's not rain. Rain, you see, feels, you know, the wetness, reflections, all kinds of things that wetness do, see, and the wind-like, you know, or a problem in the wind, the movement of cloths and materials, see. This is kind of, this is a sort of thing, a professional involvement of the second year foundation, see. And, of course, you know, you have that advertising, the advertising design, the same way. See, you do very simple problems. You know, you don't have it on a foundation here. You have one object against another, which is preparatory. It prepares for, for, for the development of students who want to be designers on the flat plane, which is advertising design. And creativity is always there in the mental attitude, you know, that uh, do this kind of thing. So uh, then, then, then they can advertise, you know, they yeah, can advertise beer. You can do so many wonderful things with beer besides drinking it, you know. You can shake it or bubble out, you know, all kinds of things they can do. You know, I. I experienced at one time that uh, some some kids in the huge you know mammoth school they were bragging about you know oh, we're PhD graduates you know did I mention this before uh, they were kind of bragging about PhD graduates we can we know all this stuff we can design we can do that I heard them I knew who they were. And I said, so you guys think you're good designers? See? He says, yeah, yeah, we're PhD graduates. I said, good, that makes it more exciting for me. I tell you what we'll do. Yeah, you got a piece of paper? Get a piece of paper out. All of you. I said, you all draw. G give me a design of a piano player. See, you're gonna have, you're gonna design a brochure for a pianist that's going to play. See, and you're gonna have the pianist and stuff on the front cover. It must have been five or six guys. He says, "All right, okay, we'll design, we'll design it." Sure. I said, "Fine." Wait a minute. I said, "Before you get started, this is my paper." See, I'm not going to watch what you guys are going to do, but I'm going to draw, I'm going to do the design that you guys are going to do. Without looking, I know what you're going to do. Oh, you know, you can't talk to us like that. Boom. PhD graduate. No, no graduates yet. Lord, I hope not, I hope, I don't care if they graduated or not, what's the use? <clears throat> They got through, they said, you're all through, fine. I turned them over and said, show them. And then I turned mine over, this is the way it's gonna look. And sure enough, it looked exactly the way I drew it. You know what they all had? They all had the piano with the open lid, you know, the one with the S curve on the piano, and a bad drawing of the pianist, bad drawing of the pianist. 
See, he says, here it is. I knew you were going, you were going to do this. I said to them, did you ever hear a piano? Sure. I said, before anything else, I said, your, your designs are lousy. They're not designs at all. I said, where are the shaping? Where are the, where are the things that respond to the quality of the shaping of things? Said, you know what's inside of a piano? I said, you know those little hammers that hit the, those strings? I hear like a boom, boom. You hear the vibrations? That's what makes the music. I said, that's part of piano music. I said, none of you had that. Or oh, even the footwork on it that made resonant. You see? None of you had to. I said, you know, if you want to do a violin, you have to crawl inside of it. And look out to see how the violin works, how it vibrates. I said, it's cool. I used to give those poor kids that drove them crazy with I used to give them, I said, to take a piccolo. And gave me, you know, maybe 25 or 30 varieties of piccolo. But before they went home, I told them, I said, before that, make sure you climb inside the piccolo. Find out how's the sound, what are the keys. Now, these great PhD candidates, they, know, they, they didn't have an inkling of an idea. I recall seeing it. I can remember his name, a great designer, the design brochures for, the, for an airfield. He designed the air. You know, the flow, the wind, the air, he designed it. He created the shapes of things. This is what design students have to learn. This is the kind of thing. And you guys are PhD graduates. You haven't even struck the inside of one cord or one wire. See, that's your problem. See, that's the design is expressed seed in all ways, you see. Well, that's the sort of thing that we try to avoid on a second year level. See, we make the kids climb inside the piano in the violin, the piccolo, the trumpet, the trombone, the timpani, if necessary. In the timpani, you have to break the top and then crawl inside of it and hit it from the bottom up, you know. <clears throat> but that's the way, you know, you have to educate these kids. And that's the way we do it, or we try to do it, over and over again. And that's the sort of thing that goes on on the second year level. Yeah.